Are these cheap Chinese lenses any good? Let's find out. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Seven Artisans 35mm f1.4. Tell you all you need to know, and I'll also compare it to the 35 1.4 Voigtlander Nocturne. Let's take a look. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLiker.com. So yes, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the Seven Artisans 35 f1.4. Quickly cover the spec. We'll then look at the results from this lens, and then real-world testing with the models in Poland, as I do in many of my other videos. If you're new to the channel, I normally look at lenses from Voigtlander and Leica, and pretty much anything Leica M out. So we're going to be seeing how it compares to the Voigtlander 35 1.4, as both these lenses are Leica M out and offer you the same functionality. So what do you get in the box? As you can see from my little display you get a nice leather lens pouch i'm not normally into lens pouches but this is this is probably better than my Leica lens pouches uh, you get a metal lens cap which fits very nicely and doesn't fall off this lens comes with a focus tab separately in a bag so you can attach it to the lens if you want a focus tab but otherwise you don't have to it's a self-adhesive tab. And the second big difference is most lenses I review come ready calibrated for the, the Leica M range front last system. This doesn't. This gives you a tool and a little target chart and kind of instructions. And so you need to calibrate this yourself. Now, I'll talk about this again at the end of the video, but just to be aware, this is the main difference between say this and say lenses from like a Voigtlander Zeiss. And so what are my first impressions of this lens? First impressions, when I first took it out of the box, the lens is reasonably big for a 35mm lens. Again, I'll cover that again in a second. And because I own multiple Leica and Voigtlander lenses, as we've got a few here, I can compare kind of like for like. The build quality is not up to the quality of Voigtlander or Leica. The hood doesn't lock out, it just spins around. But that said, it is nice to have a built-in lens hood, so we can't complain too much. The main thing that struck me was the aperture ring. It has one-stop clicks, but it's not very clicky. If we compare that to Voigtlander, the Voigtlander lenses are just so much more precise. And the same is true, for obviously, for Leica lenses as well. Uh, this is like a, a Swiss watch. This is maybe like a... <laughs> I'm going to get some hate mail for this. I don't know. A German watch. And this is probably like a, a Chinese watch. <laughs> so I'm just trying to give you my best analysis. This is the, the most sloppy and the least precise. That is the next best and not too different from the Leica. The Leica is the best of these three particular lenses. Obviously all lenses vary. I must point out that not all Chinese lenses are the same. Here's the TT Artisan 28 5.6. This lens is very, very Leica-like. It's very, very precise and beautifully made and I really, really like this lens. In terms of the build, it is absolutely fantastic. See this video in my Leica M playlist link below if you want to see the 28mm. This is a must-have lens if you shoot street and want a small compact lens for your, your Leica M camera. See more of this later. This is going to be modelling for us. In terms of the design, it's a black aluminium alloy build engraved with white paint numbers and red paint numbers. Here you can see the Leica Elmerits with the white and yellow paint. And the focus is reasonably smooth. It's got a bit of like coarseness to it, I'd say, compared to Leica and Voigtlander, which are just silky smooth if we now look at the size of this lens i'll pop it on to my m2 so on my m2 you can see that this is a big old lens in terms of it's a long lens so that means it's going to be front heavy rather than kind of balanced if you're hanging it around your neck it's going to tip because of the length if you consider that the voigtlander does the same 35 1.4 look at the size difference that means if you're an m shooter you can see here the range finder blockage on the m2 which has got a 35mm frame line. It does have your hyperfocal distance displayed, so that's good for zone focusing. I am being a bit harsh. This lens is okay build quality wise, it's just not quite the same as Leica or Voigtlander. However, the price does reflect this, so you kind of get what you pay for, so we can't really complain. In terms of the optical formula of this lens, it has 10 elements in nine groups with 10 aperture blades. It has a close focus distance of 0.7 meters, maximum aperture 1.4 to f22. As I mentioned, this is rangefinder coupled, meaning when you move your, your lens focus, it will move your patch in the viewfinder, although it's not calibrated at the box, so you will need to calibrate it to, to, to dial in the precise focusing. The 7 Nostan 35 1.4 has a 49mm filter thread, and as much as I like the, the metal lens cap, I tend to use push-on cap, so I use a cheap plastic cap from eBay, and actually the 46mm caps will fit this lens. 
and they're more common than 49 so i just use 46 mil cap on this when i'm kind of out and about in terms of weights this weighs 404 grams or 14.2 ounces so it is a slightly heavier lens when it comes to leica okay so in terms of size here's the voigtlander next to the, the seven artisans both did 5 1.4 lenses this is the version one so i did some side by side testing to see how the two lenses compared to my surprise the seven artisans was sharper than the voigtlander shot at 1.4 and also notice that the seven artisans had no focus shift where the version one nocturne classic did have focus shift from around f2 onwards just to mention these photos are shot with the panasonic lumix s5 as color jpegs with no editing sun was coming in and out of the cloud so ignore the color differences on those photos when it comes to bokeh from the two lenses i'd say the nocturne has more of a nervous bokeh with the kind of onion ring style bokeh rings where the seven artisans is slightly smoother i would say for me the big advantage of the Nocturne Classic is this is range finder coupled out the box. It's half the size and it's a lot lighter. I'll put the weights up across on the top and it also feels much better built. Uh, it's smoother, it's got nicer aperture clicks. It just feels a, a better lens all over. This is cheaper and takes nicer photos. This is more expensive, smaller, better built. So it depends what you want. What I would say is definitely consider the Nocturne Classic version 2 certified 1.4 because the version 2 was said to correct all the, the shortcomings of the version 1. Therefore, they may be more of a like-for-like like in terms of sharpness. If you want something even sharper, check out the Voigtlander 35 1.2. And here it is size-wise compared to the TT Artisan. And also the 1.4 and the 1.7 Voigtlanders compared to the TT Artisan for completeness. Here's an example with the 35 1.2. So to test the lens, I took it with me on one of my model photo shoot trips to Poland. I also had the Thid 5 1.2 Voigtlander and those two lenses are quite different. The Voigtlander is much sharper with high contrast and this was a bit more forgiving on the female skin. In terms of sharpness I was using the lens wide open for all these shots on the Leica SL full frame and they were sharp enough without being kind of clinically sharp. All these model shots were shot in raw and then just the Mr Leica Leica SL preset applied and they didn't need much work from then on. You can see this in the models in action. And yeah, I found it a good lens to use for portraits and softer than some of my other 35mm lenses. Maybe a better description is a smoother rendering. It seems to have like a smoother, finer rendering. And perhaps that's from a lower micro contrast. It just seems to have a less harsh look than other lenses. Now these photos were shot with the like M240. And I found this lens a really nice kind of creative tool. And then in terms of bokeh or bokeh, you can see from the left image that it has a much kind of smoother, perhaps more pleasing bokeh balls than the Voigtlander 35 1.4 with maybe a bit of swirl from the edges. As you stop the lens down, you can see you get a bit of jaggedy bokeh as seen it with these Christmas lights. This lens is multi-coated and it doesn't suffer too much from flare, but if you get the angle right, you can see it in some images. I do love the halation effect from shooting points of light. It can give a Cinecil 800 kind of halation vibe for those that like to shoot, say, night street photography and things like that, especially on film. And if you like sun stars, this lens does produce really nice sun stars. Wouldn't you stop the lens down a bit, as you can see from this sequence of photos. If you shoot this lens wide open, you will see quite heavy vignetting. But as you stop the lens down, that disappears. I find the vignetting quite nice for portraits, so I had no complaints. OK, so the big question is, can I recommend this lens? I would say yes. I think for the price, this lens offers a lot of creative fun. Is the 7 r and 35 1.4 suitable as your only 35mm lens? I'd say no if you're a professional photographer doing professional work or work for pay. But yes, if you're a hobbyist and you just want a lens for kind of fun, creative shooting. And in terms of price, you can pick up this lens on Pergear for £334 or $429. I must say a special thanks to Seven Artisans who reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to test this lens. It's also worth noting if you're a Sony shooter, they make this in a Sony mount or Sony E mount. And also a Moco four thirds mount, which is a much smaller lens. Check Pergear for any of the Chinese lenses. They are kind of the go to place for all the Chinese lenses. Who can I recommend this lens to? I'd recommend it to mirrorless shooters, especially because then you don't need to worry about calibration. I'd probably not recommend it so much for M shooters because it's a bit too long and a bit too heavy. I'd look to pay the high price tag and get the Voigtlander Nocturne Classic if you're like an M shooter. And that goes for digital and film. I guess one positive for any of you videographers, because this has got a less clicky aperture, this lens is probably better for video than a lot of the Leica and Voigtlander lenses. If you're looking for a cheap Chinese Sid Vimeo lens for walkabout and you stop your lens down anyway, definitely consider the 7 Artisans 35mm f5.6 pancake lens. 
I've done a video on that already and it is a tiny lens. If you enjoyed this video please smash the like button and hit subscribe so not to miss the TT Artisan's 50mm f0.9 video which will be coming very soon. With that said a massive thanks to my patrons and see you in the next video. Bye.